Hey guys, it's Tamara. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel today. We're going to talk in this video about ways to um, perceive suicide and ways to cope with intense suicidal thoughts and urges to take one's life. I got a message on my community board on YouTube from someone who said, um, I would love to hear some, some reasons why I should live. Um, somebody else asked me, um, you know, if I could talk a little bit about uh, different ways to view having suicidal thoughts. So I figured I would tackle that in today's video uh, before we start talking about other things in the next month, all right? So thank you so much for coming back to my channel for those who are subscribed. And for those who are not subscribed and are new to my channel, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button over there so you can stick around with us and, and suggest topics and learn things and grow and have a community of support here on YouTube. We have grown over a year's time. In over six over a six month time, uh, we've hit about over a thousand subscribers, and it's so cool that um, there are people who who gravitate towards a channel where we're talking about things they rarely get a chance to talk about. So um, if you do hit that subscribe button, you're going to be a part of an interesting channel. I really do hope that you get something from the videos and from the comments in the comments section. So the benefits for you in today's video is that you're going to learn um, about um, intense suicidal thoughts and the questions that you should be asking if someone's considering suicide. And I'm going to also give you some suggestions on how to cope with suicidal thoughts or urges and kind of um, um, give you a different way to look at this. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump in. So in the last video, I talked about suicide and I separated it into three different categories. First was the, th the thinkers category. I'm gonna post the video up here so you can see it. But first was the thinkers category. The second was the attempters category. And the third was the completers category. And I've kind of learned to view um, suicidal clients in either, you know, in either of those categories and in, in, in the three categories. And depending on the intensity of their suicidal thoughts and their urges, I will often have a very real and authentic conversation with them about why they want to take their life. A lot of people feel that um, the pain of life is not worth um, sticking around for. The loss, the grief, the challenges, the difficulties, the mountains, the storms, the tornadoes, they don't feel that it's worth it. And so, you know, for me, there's two categories of, of suicidal people, and that's uh, a, a group of people who are not mentally ill, a group of people who are not psychotic, but rather realistic, and they don't want to live because they see the pain and the challenge and the difficulty inherent in life. And so they're kind of philosophical, they're existential, they are spiritual, they are looking for something that uh, life doesn't always produce. Life produces material, material, material wealth, um, uh, friendships and social connections, um, uh, you know, all the tangible things that you can think of, the clothes, the shoes, the cars, the homes, you know, the list goes on. And some people feel that it's not worth it. I'm one of them who feels that, you know, going after those things in life is not really worth your soul. So those kind of people end up suicidal because they don't understand life and it doesn't clip for them. Then I believe there's another category of people who want to die because they have trauma, they have mental illness, they have um, intense depression and stress and anxiety that they're not able to resolve. And so, you know, they resort to suicide because they don't see any other way to cope and to deal with life. So I usually separate categories in my practice like that. The, the, the part, the, um, um, compartment of people or the group or category of people over here that are sensible and they just don't know how to deal with what they get and then another group of people um, who are just mentally ill and traumatized and stressed and overwhelmed maybe even substance abuser um, and they just don't know how to deal with it right that group of people so um, you know, it's hard to really help either one of those groups figure out which way they want to go and it's hard to ask them to stick around because they don't have to and for the most part, they don't want to. So um, let me give you six different things that I want you to consider um, if you know someone who is considering suicide or if you yourself have considered it. Um, I often encourage my suicidal clients to find a reason to live. One of the things that I ask them when they express suicidal thoughts is, can you look over the past year and see anything 
that gave you some joy. The other question I ask is, can you look ahead for the next six months to 12 months and tell me if you see any reason to live? And if they tell me no for both of those questions, then I know their motivation for suicide may be high. Um, every question I ask gets me closer to an answer um, that I need, which is that they're serious about what they're thinking. Um, if I'm dealing with the thinker, the one who's considering and pondering suicide, my questions are really geared towards trying to help them look within and figure out why. So I encourage you or, or somebody that you know to, to find a reason to live, right? Look over the past year and really objectively determine what I have missed something special last year had I killed myself. Look ahead six to 12 months from now, what can I look forward to? Is it a vacation? Is it getting a new job? Is it marrying? Is it having children? Is it um, somehow winning the lottery and making money? Is it, you know, maturing and growing? You know, what can I look forward to in the next six to 12 months? And what happened over the last year that I could look at and say, okay, if I wasn't here, I'd miss that. So I, that's the number one thing I encourage. The second thing is, you know, examine the foundation of your reason. Why am I wanting to commit suicide? Am I wanting to commit suicide? Um, and am I considering suicide because I'm, I've, I'm getting a, I'm getting a divorce, excuse me, or I, I'm in the middle of a divorce and my ego is crushed. Um, my, my childhood trauma has taken over my life and I can't take the symptoms. I have bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and I can't cope. I'm angry with life, um, or I'm trying to get back at someone for hurting me, right? So you really want to consider, why am I considering this? You know, is this something that I can work out? Is it something that's temporary and short term? Or is it something that's long term and, and, and is never really gonna change? So uh, you definitely wanna consider that. Consider the foundation of the suicidal thought. Also consider the residual effects of you committing suicide or the person committing suicide. And what I mean by that is you wanna look around you and say, okay, will my mother be hurt? Will my father be hurt? Will my cousin be devastated? Will people who are relying on me, like my clients, my patients, my you know agents, my um, employees, will they worry about me? Will they be hurt and crushed, right? Will the contribution that I'm making to society um, as a helper, as a, as a flight attendant, as a um, veterinarian, as a vet, veteran, as a doctor, a lawyer, um, whatever, as a supervisor, will that job be impacted by me taking my life? So you wanna be asking those questions. Think about the residual effects of what you're considering. The next thing is um, re-educate yourself to it. So you want to um, find a reason to research the topic of suicide, right? Um, do I need to know a little bit more about what I'm considering? Um, do I need to research the percentage of people who jump or uh, kill themselves by a certain weapon or overdose? Do I need to, <clears throat> excuse me, do I need to consider, um, you know, that there's hope, that there's possible treatment out there for me? Do I need to um, consider a drastic form of therapy like electro, um, convulsive therapy, um, ECT? Do I need to, you know, um, get into a group counseling um, forum or, or um, agency? You know, what do I need to do um, to ensure that I'm educated before I take my life? Um, and then last but not least, and I, I think this is so hard because a lot of people have given up, seek help. I think you know, a lot of people have given up on counseling, they've given up on psychotherapy, they've given up on medical doctors, they've given up on psychiatrists, and they feel like, what's the point? You know, I don't, I don't really think I can be helped. And I beg to differ. I think there's always hope. You don't know what the next day may bring. You don't know what YouTube video you may watch next that can click for you, right? Or that could light a light bulb off in your head. You don't know the doctor you may see in another month who may change things drastically for you. You don't know the amount of strength and courage you may obtain in the next few weeks or so. So because we can't predict the future, you don't know. And so if your life is taken, it doesn't give you that opportunity to, to consider the what ifs. And so I think these are all important points that we need to consider. One of the things I tell my clients when they come in and they tell me they're suicidal is I tell them, I can't stop you and I wouldn't want to get in the way of your free will. But what I do want to do is help you examine whether or not this is the right move for you. And I also want you to consider your worth and the residual effects of, of what you're getting ready to do. 
And uh, interestingly, they back down because they recognize that I care. They recognize that their family and their, their friends care and something switches on them. And I've had um, quite a few clients say, you know what, I'm no longer suicidal. And all they needed was that inch of hope. Um, and so uh, I encourage you to share this video with someone. Maybe it can be helpful to them as well. Thank you so much for being with me in today's video. We're going to jump on a new topic next month. And uh, we're going to uh, jump into a new topic and series in the next week or so. So stick around for that. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, guys, if you would, if it was helpful to you. And hit that subscribe button so you can stick around. All right. I will see you uh, in a few days. Bye-bye.